This weekend just passed saw the third iteration of the infantry combat overhaul which came with a few tweaks and changes. Nothing big, just a few small tweaks here and there. Which, I'll be honest, I kind of like that approach. It means they can dial things in much more accurately than just going full pendulum swing like most development cycles do. To summarise the changes in playtest 3, suppression was tweaked so the visual effect would kick in sooner and reach its maximum intensity much quicker, weapon handling was adjusted to be somewhere between playtest 1 and playtest 2, the AK-12 iron sights were reconfigured and the glorious canted clear sight mechanic had been temporarily removed, some 80 launchers had a few tweaks to help with use, and now, when you are revived but not healed, your stamina will regenerate to 50% at a 33% regeneration rate. This one thing here was a fantastic addition, as many of you would have experienced during a playtest 1 or 2 with zero stamina and no medics nearby was an absolute nightmare and many people would just give up and respawn to not have to deal with that. So now you get your vision back and you have some control of your weapon and the ability to move and go and find a medic and allow you to continue to enjoy the experience of squad. Now the purpose of this video is I want to share some of my thoughts and feelings on these playtests, the concept of it all and the directions things may or may not be going in. Granted, whilst a lot of the things I will be talking about here are my own personal feelings, I know a lot of people have shared my stance and viewpoints on things, be it in an area praised or an area with concern. The first thing I want to dive into is suppression. Vanilla or current squad suppression does exist, but it is so minimal anyone with any form of decent first person shooter nuance can usually work through it. Things like being able to peek head on a machine gunner or light vehicles 50 cal is just daft. Squad suppression mechanic just feels like a tamed down version of project realities in which most of your screen would go black and grey making you want to seek out cover momentarily. A cheap but effective way of doing things. So it does need to be changed. Suppression in playtest 1 was always going to feel extreme as it was our first experience with it. In fact that could be said for a lot of playtest 1. Playtest 2 made a few small tweaks to it and where the visual effects would take a little bit longer to kick in and generally made it ever so slightly more forgiving. And I will be totally honest with you, the changes were barely noticeable. Anyone who says they were able to peek up and deck a machine gun ahead on is talking absolute clart, because it was still brutal. Look how much I'm getting knocked around here simply by being inside a building, and that is just from a rifleman tapping at the walls around me. If you, as a 240 gunner, have been getting clapped whilst hosing at people, it's probably because you are skylining on top of a building and someone used their brain, flanked you and shot you in the side of the cranium. Playtest 3 as noted before, the effects were brought forwards and got more intense much quicker and what it ended up doing inadvertently was it buffed machine gunners and marksmen and light vehicles and anyone who just likes spraying in random directions because it gave a greater reward to inaccurate fire. You could be prone out somewhere and someone could be shooting at somebody else some 30 yards west of you and you end up unable to do anything because you end up with the maximum suppression effect. I feel like in cases like that it should be like a big initial spike and then as you realise it's not at you it should start to calm down enough for you to be able to move somewhere else and not end up blind by the excessive use of blur. When it's directly at you however that's fair enough. You either need to radio one of your buddies to put pressure on who's laying into you or move during the moment that they're reloading. But because it takes that long for the effect to wear off, that is near impossible. I'm going to talk about the excessive use of blur in a moment, but before I do, I just want to mention that the aim punch or flinch mechanic also needs to be reeled in a fair bit. It's reaching postscriptum's levels of stupidity. It's not a fun mechanic to have in a game, period. It's fine to have a small, moderated amount, but again, when you're nowhere near the building that's being shot at and your soldier breaks into a sudden, severe case of Parkinson's, you know that needs to be railed in. What I would personally like to see changed, at least with the visual effects on this, is the blurriness just needs to be calmed down a bit. It feels a bit like, as a filter, it's too close and makes looking for suitable cover extremely difficult. So if the blur was pushed back deeper within the screen or your field of view, but you still have the intensities from that over sharpness effect for things up close, it's going to make finding suitable cover more intuitive for everyone rather than the current smash the prone button and hope for the best. 
On top of this, calm down the effects for those who are outside that cone so people have a chance to make a flanking maneuver or to at least spot where the shots are coming from so other people on the team can deal with the threat. Now back onto the blur effects. Myself and a lot of other people have been experiencing headaches, eye strain, motion sickness and nausea and that is being caused by the excessive use of blur effects on everything. There's absolutely no need for blur on most of this. The only effect I will be happy to keep the blur on will be suppression itself, as I mentioned before. But blur from firing a weapon, blur inside your scope, blur in and around your optics, blur on your optics and irons, blur when aiming in and out, and blur when you're trying to see your target after you fired a single round, it's just too much. It looks cheap, it's tacky, and most importantly, it's not fun. There's absolutely no reason whatsoever to hamper your vision in a video game whilst using the weapon. It's just not fun. Hell, weapons are more fun to use in Project Reality, or hell, even better in Hell Let Loose. Look, we have other major factors that have slowed the game down dramatically and seriously hampers you as a player. Suppression, sway, and stamina. Taking away our sight is just a massive kick in the balls for no apparent reason whatsoever other than just to give you the middle finger and be annoying as f I don't care what anyone says. You cannot accurately recreate how a human operates and uses a firearm in a video game because a lot of this rubbish that's been forced upon us is naturally tuned out by your eyes, your brain and your senses. So doing so with all of these visual effects that your brain and eyes can't tune out, well, it's not the greatest of decisions. And if anything, it massively breaks the immersive experience. Devil Dog Gamer talks about this as well in his most recent video, along with other things like his real life experiences whilst in active combat. The link will be in the description down below, but it is absolutely 100% worth a watch and will be an eye opener for a lot of people. So if all or the majority of these blur effects get binned off, it's immediately going to make the experiencing much more engaging and much more fun for those involved especially as the majority of squad player base is a more casual player looking for something between Armour 3 and Battlefield. But it won't make it into a Twitch or reaction based shooter people are so paranoid about because of the three S's will still have a massive effect on how you perform. Suppression, sway and stamina. All I'm asking is to be able to see what I'm doing and be able to play the game without ending up with a migraine and then having to quit out after two hours of playtime. Now, speaking of blurriness and optics, the amount your weapon moves backwards whilst firing needs to be tamed down dramatically, especially on the M4s. I feel like every time I fire an M4, I'm getting a black eye and I have the weapon control of a toddler, not a soldier. This added in with the pointless blur effect when you're trying to get follow-up shots. Weapon sway and stamina management making things extremely frustrating as it is, it's just not fun to use. And when you look at the fact that optics are standard issue these days, and most maps in squad, your average engagement range is about 200 meters. Forcing people to use irons and red dots isn't the way forwards. It's a game. Let people use what they want. Not everyone has perfect 2020 vision. Some people use ACOGs so they can see the enemy whilst playing. And the bottom line is, not very many games have got red dots and iron sights right in a video game because you can't get the depth of field and perspective correct. Because what would essentially be in a three-dimensional environment is now being portrayed to you on a two-dimensional flat screen. Moving on to sway and weapon control, the more I play it, the more I'm enjoying and liking how sway has had an effect on the game overall. Recoil is a little bit goofy and it feels like everything between my shoulders and my wrist is elastic. But I and many other people could live with that simply if we could just see what we're doing. At least this side of things will become learnable and muscle memory. Being blind just means blind look and you can't learn from that. The only tweak I would like to see with sway is when you turn slightly. The gun gets flung around as if I'm about to turn on the spot rather than 20 degrees or so. So if that could come in a bit slower and smoother for basic movements, that would be beautiful. I feel like stamina and movement needs to undergo a few small changes as well. As it stands right now, if your stamina is below 75%, it's not even worth trying to get your gun up to shoot. And with it being used up extremely quickly and regenerating slower than it used to, then mixing the fact that it's linked with sway control, you're basically punished hard for moving. Thus making attacking an objective insanely difficult. A semi-smart change would be to either give us more stamina or give us a faster sprint speed because the only reason to use stamina now is to sprint to cover 
or to climb up over something. Perhaps make it a tactical sprint so you only have hold of your weapon with one arm, meaning you can move faster for that two to three hundred meters, but then you are waiting for your stamina to regen before you can move out or gain composure to use your weapon. Another nice change would be if you could just choose to jog without having to use up all of your stamina as well. End of the day, I know there's vehicles to move around the map, but Squad is an infantry game at its core. Doesn't matter what you do, people will always run from point to point. Vehicles are used by a small percentage of the general player base, so don't punish people for playing the game. And on the topic of sway, stamina and weapon control, it would be a smart change if AT launches had a slight buff and had some of these negatives reduced slightly. These kits are used in the most stressful of situations within squad, and as things stand now, they are almost impossible to use effectively. All of these changes have already inadvertently made vehicles absolutely lethal. They were already overpowered in the current state of squad, but they're going to be even more so now. Again, I'm just wanting to keep things fun and fair for the general player base. No one enjoys getting smashed by an enemy infantry fighting vehicle repeatedly, but now add into the fact that you can't do anything about it, we'll just make people leave. Yes, you could say, oh, but your team has armor assets too, just use them. As I mentioned earlier, most of the player base doesn't touch them, and the other times, the armor imbalance is so wild it is pointless. And to round off movement, one thing that may need addressing pretty shortly is zigzagging, because it's near impossible to follow up shots at someone who's 1 to 200 meters out, but now they know, so people have started doing this arcade type zigzagging to dodge your shots, and it's been used to great effect. Perhaps we need a little bit of inertia to take away that instant ability to snap change direction repeatedly. I'm not going to talk about how much I dislike the point fire mechanic because as it stands, there isn't one. It's hip fire, not point fire, and there's been no changes made to it as of yet. A few players coming back from Project Reality, believe it or not, this couldn't be any further away from PR. Project Reality is far simpler. If you move faster, weapon control is infinitely easier and that game is far more forgiving. I understand it's a very old game, but perhaps some of you are reminiscing with rose tinted glasses a little bit too much. Don't get me wrong, I've enjoyed playing it as of late, but it's far more casual than Squad in its current form. It's just perhaps the player base is a bit more hardcore. For those of you who've just picked up Squad, your already difficult learning curve is just about to go vertical. And those who play it competitively or semi-competitively, as always, you guys will be on top of things first, albeit with a bit of a struggle initially whilst dealing with the mechanics that are just there to be annoying rather than to increase or add to the difficulty. And for those of you who play this casually, you're probably going to be the most effective here. And this update will either suck you in or spit you out. However, if OWI do a few basic things like removing the blur effects inside of optics and just rein in some of these extremities, it takes away a lot of the blind look and frustration but adds in the potential for layers and levels of skill which turns into rewarding gameplay and replayability. Machine gunners have already been made overpowered because now you have a cone of fire that pushes suppression over a wide area, it's basically rewarding you for being inaccurate. It's not all doom and gloom though. The marksman kit is no longer a complete noob trap and is possibly the most immersive kit to use right now. I have always been a massive marksman enjoyer, but with how things have changed in this overhaul, this kit really sucks me in. It would be nice to have a few more pistol mags though, so I can be effective in close quarter situations, especially when somebody pushes me. Look, at the top and bottom of all of this, I love the concept and where it's going. There's just a few things that needs to be adjusted to make it enjoyable for the player base on the whole. This overhaul is coming, whether we want it or not. This is the developer's vision. But so long as we keep taking part in the playtests, giving honest feedback and approaching it with an open mindset, this gives us the best chance we have of giving the developers the correct feedback, which then steers it into the right direction. Nothing I've mentioned today is for personal gain. I'm just trying to look at the bigger picture and the player base on the whole. There's nothing wrong with something being difficult so long as it's logical and can be learned. That's one of the reasons why Escape from Tarkov was so popular. The level of difficulty was so insanely high, it set a new bar, and people wanted to master it. If they used these stupid blur effects that made it so you can't see or use your weapons, it would never have been as popular as it is now. My biggest concern at the moment though, is with all of these infantry changes, we're probably going to see a lot of experienced players turn to vehicles 
and really cause havoc within the game. Because they're so hard to counter, and an experienced player in a vehicle, like a 50 cal striker, can completely ruin your team's day, game after game after game. There's going to be a lot more changes coming and going, but so long as it's thought about logically, and as I stated before, so long as our feedback is taken into consideration, it will all end golden. Anyway, that's it for this video. What changes or adjustments would you like to see in the upcoming playtests? Let me know down in the comments below. And a stark warning for some of you, please respect other people's opinions. Just because they don't agree with you does not give you the right to attack them. Any comments like this on my channel will be swiftly put in the bin. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to check out my squad server, Dead on Dismount. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next video or in my server.